This is a spreadsheet demo of analysis of variance. In this example, we seek to compare the means of three populations, A, B, and C. In the language of ANOVA, we have three treatments, and we wish to determine whether, on average, they yield similar outcomes. And we can set this to a story if we want to. For example, we're testing three types of fertilizers to see if they are equally effective. And we're going to do this by analyzing the crop production data for each type. So these are the production data for t fertilizer type A, and for fertilizer type B, and for fertilizer type C. So with this, the null hypothesis is that the three population means are the same. As I show here, in other words, the average crop yield is the same across all three types of fertilizers. If, from our sample, we find that at least one of the means is statistically significantly different, we reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative. The, the data structure for spreadsheet analysis is as shown, with the sample data for each treatment shown in a column style, as I show it right here. And here, there are five observations for each of the treatments Keep in mind that the number of observations for the treatments need not be equal. Here, for example, you can have 5 here, and 15 here, and 7 here. In this example, though, we have number of observations the same across all three types for simplicity. Now then, Regardless of the version of Excel you, you use, look for the tab or dialog box called Data Analysis. In this version, if you click on Data, you see here Data Analysis. If you do not have Data Analysis in your Excel, look for the Add-in uh, tab somewhere. You can do a search for it. Usually it's going to be somewhere in File, and then you look for Add-in somewhere out there. And then you're going to add in Data Analysis. And when you click on it, scroll to the top of it and choose ANOVA single factor because here we have just one single factor, fertilizer type. And this single factor is being tested at three different levels. So click on it and OK. And then for the, uh, for the input range, highlight from the column labels, type A, B, and C, and work your way down do not include fertilizer type. It's not part of the data structure. And then by default, columns are already checked in terms of uh, the way the uh, structure is um, designed. Then click here for labels in first row. That way the computer knows that the first cell contains non-numeric labels. By default, alpha is set to 0.05. If you want it to be 0.01, change that to 0.01. You want it to be 0.10, change it to be 0.10. However, uh, by default, let's use um, 0.05, which is the most con conventional level of significance. So click here for output. When you click that, this uh, dialog box blinks, but make sure you click right here, right away, so that your cursor is blinking right in here in this uh, cell, as you see. And then while it's blinking there, choose a spot on the body of the spreadsheet, like there. Click right there, and when you click right here, it registers. The cell address registers in this box. And now you're ready to rock and roll. Click OK. And that's your output. Now let's make it larger so it looks nicer. Let's change this font size to maybe 16 should be fine or something like that. And I'm also going to make my data set uh, quite nicer. All right, I'm going to make this um, align it to the right so it matches the output. And then I'm going to convert these to um, perhaps two or three decimal places. The rest of these. All right, and you can kick it up some more if you want to, no big deal. All right, so now let's summarize. Now here, this is sum of squares treatments. Sum of squares treatments, which is the same thing as between groups. That's the term Excel uses. 
between groups means between the three types between the three columns and that also indicates the differences in the variations across the three different populations so sum of squares treatment is 137.20 and sum of squares error, which Excel refers to as sum of squares within groups, is 190.8. Within groups, variation, remember, captures the differences between each of these observations and the mean for this particular group. So it looks at variation within each of the groups for A separately, for B, and separately for C, and then adds up all of those square differences, and that's what posted here. In a different presentation posted here on YouTube, you do I showed you how to manually calculate these measures of variation for ANOVA. And then if you add these two together, that's your total variation, which also calculates the differences between each of these observations and the grand mean. And the degrees of freedom for treatment is 2, which is N minus, sorry, C minus 1 degrees of freedom. C refers to the number of treatments, which is 3. Minus 1 is 2 for treatment. And for error is 12, which is N minus C. N being the overall sample size of 15 here. Minus C, the number of treatments. 15 minus 3 will give us 12. If you add these two, you get 14. Alternatively, the total degrees of freedom is N minus 1, which is the total number of observations of 15 minus 1. This is the mean square treatment, which is sum of squares treatment divided by the degrees of freedom of 2. You get 68.6. .6. This is mean square error, which is sum of squares error divided by degrees of freedom of 12. And that's how you get 15.9. The most important statistic here for the test of significance is the F statistic, which is equal to mean square treatment divided by mean square error. That's how you get 4.3. We're going to compare this calculated F value to the critical value from the table. So this is the critical value, and we find that since the calculated F of 4.3 exceeds the critical value of 3.88, we reject this null hypothesis in favor of the alternative. There is yet another way you can draw this conclusion, and that's by looking at the p-value. Testing at the 5% level, we find that this p-value is less than 0.05. Whenever your p-value is less than the level of significance with which you are carrying out the test, you reject the null hypothesis. So to summarize this piece of information, if calculated f is greater than critical f, you reject HO, the null hypothesis, which is the same thing as saying if your p-value is less than alpha, the level of significance, you reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative. And this concludes this presentation on the use of Excel spreadsheets to obtain results for analysis of variance. I'm Pat Obi, Professor of Finance and Quantitative Methods at Purdue University Calumet.